Hello, my name is Troy Atkins and I am the founder and owner of Atkins Capital Management. Atkins Capital Management is a housing advisory services company. I want to talk to you today about the key events that have transpired in the U.S. residential housing market during the third quarter of 2022. During the third quarter of this year, a review of when will government control of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae end report by the New York University Furman Center for Real Estate and Urban Policy and the monetary policy actions of the Federal Reserve to help curtail the impact of inflation on the U.S. economy were the primary topics of conversation. This movie presentation also provides an overview of the home price level for a select group of cities that make up the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index and it provides a wealth of information for prospective home buyers to use in order to make a prudent home purchase decision. This presentation was written, narrated, edited, produced, and published by Troy Atkins. I am the founder and owner of Atkins Capital Management. Atkins Capital Management is a privately owned and independently operated company. Our exclusive focus is on residential real estate. ACM is not affiliated with any parties associated with the residential housing industry. Our mission is to bridge the gap in the residential housing market, where deficiencies in education, public policy, regulation, product structure, and personnel have created an environment where prospective home buyers need objective information and useful analytical tools in order to help them make a prudent home purchase decision. As an investment professional, I have more than 15 years of real estate analysis experience, more than 10 years of institutional investment consulting experience, and more than 8 years of freelance financial writing experience. I am also the author of more than 25 published articles. For more information about my background, skills, and experience, please visit the Atkins Capital Management website. With this overview of ACM in mind, let me now turn your attention to our review of the Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae conservatorship. The general theme of this section addresses when and how the government will end conservatorship. During the third quarter of 2022, the NYU Furman Center examined the ongoing state of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Freddie and Fannie are government-sponsored enterprises that play a crucial role in the U.S. housing environment. Freddie and Fannie fund roughly half of all single-family mortgages in America. Fourteen years after the height of the financial crisis, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae are still under government conservatorship, meaning their operating control is still being maintained by the Federal Housing Finance Agency. The GSEs were placed under government control on September 7, 2008. In conservatorship, the GSEs have kept their operating core activities intact. According to the Furman Review, it appears that the status of the GSE's conservatorship is not going to change in the near future, regardless of the political party involved, as virtually no material changes have been made by the Bush, Obama, Trump, or Biden administrations. An exit from government control for the two GSEs is probably in the rough range of 2030, and potentially even later. A key assumption of the Furman Review is that the government actually wants to end its control of the two GSEs. That is, in fact, a questionable assumption, as many political and interest groups seem to like today's status quo. Nevertheless, it is important to note that the Trump administration put in place provisions for the GSEs to retain earnings to raise capital. Such provisions are vital for the GSEs to exit conservatorship. The ongoing operating status of the GSEs has been contemplated for numerous years. During the second quarter of 2017, a comprehensive research viewpoint by BlackRock Investment Management Company titled Addressing the Housing Finance Conundrum provided an excellent overview of six policy proposals. An overview of the BlackRock study 
can be found in the ACM 2017 Q2 Residential Housing Market Review. Based on the information in the NYU Furman Report and the BlackRock Viewpoint Report, Atkins Capital Management has reached the following policy conclusions governing the ongoing operation of the GSEs. The role of the U.S. government's housing policy via the GSEs and the Federal Reserve are too extensive to be funded by the private capital market. The Federal Reserve will have to unwind its GSE mortgage-backed security holdings on its balance sheet over a long period of time in order for private capital to take a leading role in the U.S. Housing Policy Administration. The Fed's policy to unwind its exposure to GSE mortgage-backed securities will have to take place in concert with its tightening monetary policy. Such policy positions are counteractive. It is clear that future U.S. housing policy pertaining to the GSEs will have to be designed according to the way things are rather than to the way things should be. However, Given the fact that the GSEs went from zero capital in the first part of 2017 to $85 billion as of 2022, President Trump's administrative policy is clearly moving the GSEs in the right direction. ACM highly recommends that the Federal Reserve stop raising the federal funds rate. Instead, ACM recommends that the Federal Reserve raise the reserve requirement on banking institutions in order to help curtail inflation, and that it signals and implements a more dovish monetary policy to help keep housing affordable for the general public. Atkins Capital Management has published a wealth of analytical information about the role of the GSEs and the Federal Reserve's role in the U.S. housing market in its quarterly residential housing reviews. For more information, please watch the movie presentations listed below. The second section of our analysis pertains to the Federal Reserve's monetary policy. The general theme of this section is that the Fed has set forth hawkish monetary policy via higher interest rates to curb inflation. The questions raised by Atkins Capital Management are why did the Fed cut the Federal Reserve requirement to 0% in 2020 and when will it be raised? Currently, the Federal Reserve is primarily concerned about reducing rampant inflation in the U.S. As a result, the Fed has taken a very hawkish monetary policy stance to lower the rate of inflation to a level that will foster an affordable cost of living. Accordingly, the Federal Reserve raised the target range for the federal funds rate from 1.5% to 1.75% in June to 2.25% and 2.5% in July and again in September to a target range of 3% and 3.35%. To follow suit, the national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fully amortized fixed rate loan began the quarter at 5.7% and ended the quarter at 6.7%. The national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fully amortized fixed rate loan reached an all-time low of 2.67% on December 17, 2020, and the all-time high of 18.63% in October of 1981. In light of the Fed's policy position, it is perplexing to understand why a major monetary policy feature that is at its discretion is not being utilized or even discussed in order to combat inflation in the U.S. For more than a decade prior to March 26, 2020, the reserve requirement was fixed at 10%. At that level, the amount of money in circulation would have been curtailed to a level that would have helped mitigate inflation. Moreover, such policy strengthened the financial solvency of the U.S. banking system. However, on March 26, 2020, the Federal Reserve lowered the reserve requirement from 10% to 0% for all depository institutions. This policy provision dramatically raised the amount of money available to be in circulation, which in turn helped exacerbate inflation. Moreover, such policy weakened the solvency of the U.S. banking system. 
With that in mind, it would be prudent monetary policy to raise the reserve requirement back to 10% in order to help curtail inflation, examine its impact on the inflation level, and if still necessary, continue raising the reserve requirement until inflation is brought down to an acceptable level. Such a position would also allow the Fed to implement a more dovish monetary policy in terms of interest rates, which in turn would help bolster the U.S. housing market and help the GSEs exit conservatorship. The following chart illustrates the U.S. mortgage loan interest rate environment for the first three quarters of 2022. As the chart illustrates, the first three quarters have experienced very hawkish monetary policy by the Federal Reserve Committee. Such actions were implemented to curtail rampant inflation, affecting every sector of the U.S. economy. However, the Fed's actions have also slowed housing sales throughout the nation, as mortgage loan interest rates are at much higher levels, thus exacerbating the housing cost burden. The outstanding question that needs to be addressed is why the Fed is not raising the reserve requirement from 0%. An increase in the reserve requirement in conjunction with more dovish monetary policy would help curtail inflation, yet have less of an impact on housing. Now that I have provided an overview of the events and trends that have taken place in the residential housing environment for the quarter, let me turn your attention to the proprietary finance-based analytical methodology and cloud-based residential real estate analysis software application that you can use in order to provide an assessment of the price level of homes in your community, as well as for specific home purchase opportunities. The Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer is an internet-based software application that analyzes the relationship between the median home price level for a city and the median household income level for the city. With this information, the software application takes into account the most recent month-ending national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fully amortized fixed-rate mortgage loan, and the assumption that no more than 28% of pre-tax household income should be spent by homeowners in order to repay the principal and interest costs for their mortgage loan. By utilizing this information, the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer can accurately assess the price level of homes in your city. From the first analytical perspective, the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer determines the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in your city by calculating the mortgage loan interest rate that justifies the price level of homes in your city. With this information, the justified mortgage loan interest rate is compared against the national average mortgage loan interest rate in order to accurately quantify and assess the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in your city. From the second analytical perspective, the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer calculates the percentage of household income that would have to be spent by the people that live in your city in order to justify the price level of homes in your city. With this information, the justified percentage of household income amount is compared against the traditionally accepted household income amount of 28% in order to accurately quantify and assess the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in your city. By utilizing the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer, you can determine the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in your community, as well as the magnitude of underpricing or overpricing of a specific home that you are considering to purchase. This in turn will help you make a prudent home purchase decision. For more information about our finance-based analytical methodology and the use of the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer, please review our finance-based analytical methodology report on the Atkins Capital Management website and watch the wealth of movie presentations that provide an overview of how the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer is utilized. The fourth section of our analysis pertains to ACM's housing analysis. The general theme of this section is that home price levels are overpriced in 48 cities that constitute the Atkins 60 City 
Home Price Index. With this overview in mind, let us now focus on the assessment of the price level of homes across the country. Based upon the justified percentage of household income amount, 48 cities that make up the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index were classified as overpriced for the quarter. San Francisco, Honolulu, Boston, Los Angeles, and New York City were identified as the five most overpriced cities in the index. In terms of a relative price level analysis, it is not possible to justify the home price level for the top five overpriced cities by reducing the 30-year fixed rate mortgage loan interest rate from 6.7% to 0%. In order to classify the homes in the top five overpriced cities as underpriced, it would need to be deemed prudent by prospective home buyers to spend more than the respective justified percentage of household income amounts. In order to justify the median home price level for each city, the median required household income level would need to increase to a level within the respective range of $175,464 and $379,875. Based on the median household income level, the quarter ending national average mortgage loan interest rate and the assumption that no more than 28% of pre-tax household income should be spent in order to repay the principal and interest costs of a mortgage loan, the justified home price level for the top five overpriced cities fell within the respective range of $208,940 and $348,095. Prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess the level of overpricing of homes in their community. On the other side of the spectrum, based upon the justified percentage of household income amount, 12 cities that make up the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index were classified as underpriced for the quarter. Detroit, Jackson, St. Louis, Memphis, and Wichita were identified as the top five most underpriced cities in the index. Wichita was classified as the fifth most underpriced city due to its lower justified mortgage loan interest rate amount. In order to classify homes in the top five underpriced cities as overpriced, the national average mortgage loan interest rate would have to increase from 6.7% to more than the respective justified mortgage loan interest rate amount for each city, which fell within the range of 8.8% and 19.7%. Or it would have to be deemed imprudent by prospective home buyers to spend as much as the respective justified percentage of household income amount for each city in order to repay the cost of a mortgage loan. Given the recent events that have transpired in the residential housing market, and taking into account the fact that buying a home will likely be the largest single financial transaction that prospective home buyers will ever make, and the bulk of their net worth will likely be tied up in their home, prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to analyze residential real estate from five financial perspectives. First, prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in their community. Second, prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess the largest amount of money they should spend in order to purchase a home. Third, prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess the amount of money they would need to earn on an annual basis in order to be able to afford to purchase a specific home. Fourth, prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess total home ownership costs expressed as a percentage of household income. And fifth, prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess how much a home would need to appreciate in value each year in order to offset the costs associated with owning the home. By assessing residential real estate in this manner, prospective home buyers will be able to make a prudent home purchase decision. For more information about the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index, 
to watch our catalog of residential housing movie presentations, or to subscribe to use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer, please visit the Atkins Capital Management website at residentialrealestateanalysis.com. This is Troy Atkins saying thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation.